fellow tankers, Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and today we're gonna talk about Himmelsdorf and what is the strategy of Himmelsdorf. How important is the banana road? Is it really that important? Will heading up to the hill guarantee the victory in the game? Or will it not? So we're gonna cover those topics today as well as we're gonna talk about risk reward kind of scenario. But before we do that, let me apologize for lack of videos over the last week and a half, maybe two weeks. I'm actually away on holidays in Europe, so it's kind of hard for me to play here. I don't have my Xbox with me. I don't have my microphone here with me. So I just found an evening to put together this video for you guys and to show you that this channel is still active and will remain active for the foreseeable future. Although you probably won't see anything more from me over the next week, maybe week and a half until I get back. Now that said, let's get back to our topics. So obviously if you want to have a good game, big game with big damage numbers, you have to be somewhat aggressive. You want to be able to get early damage in a game and you want to be able to get late damage in a game. Now, how do you define this aggression? And at which point should you enforce yourself with that aggression? Well, first of all, you should always rely on strengths of your tank. So any tank you play, you should know whether you can engage someone frontally, whether you have any armor that you can bounce, whether you have mobility, can you escape from a certain situation, or whether you cannot. So there's a lot of factors that come into play here. Now in this video, I'm mostly going to focus on heavy tanks. So in the first game, I'm going to play the T-29 Tier 7 American heavy tank, while in the second video, I will be in the Carnarvon Tier 8 British heavy tank as well. Now, with heavy tanks, the strategy will always be slightly different depending on how fast the tank is moving. Can you get yourself out of the situation? Because in many cases, you get into a heavy tank and you don't have mobility. Whichever direction you choose, it might be your final one. Because in many cases, in a matter of four or five minutes, your team will be dead or your team will decimate the opposing team. So you either will not get to the bottle or you will get stuck in a position where you cannot escape. So that's what we're gonna cover today. Now in both cases, I got spawned on the same side of the map on Himmelsdorf, which is the north side of the map. Now the same would probably apply if you're on the south side of the map. So regardless of which side you're on, I think what I'll be talking about here will apply. But because both games are from the same spawn location, it will be easier for me to relay some of the important information to you and the things that went right in the first game versus what didn't go right in the second game. So in both cases, in both games, you will see that my team blindly will head for the hill. And when I was a very inexperienced tanker, that's what I used to do all the time. But now, every time before I get to the hill, I pay attention to the banana road. Why? Because if you lose banana road, 90% of time you will lose this game because once the opposition infiltrates the banana road, they have free access to your base, they have free access in between the buildings and just kind of clean up the entire area. And these days, especially these days, it seems like the teams like to stick together and they push together. Now, I've mentioned this many times before in my videos, on small maps, this strategy actually does work because if you can push the choke point and if you can just punch through the opposition's defenses, they'll be spread so thin they will not be able to defend properly. However, on the big maps, this strategy in many cases does not work because there are multiple firing angles where the shots could be coming from. So if on a big map the team pushes in one direction, it is possible they'll be subjected to crossfire from different locations of the map and potentially from tanks that they cannot see, right? But let's forget about big maps in this video. Let's focus on Himmelsdorf and small maps. And the main thing here is to pay attention to the map and see where majority of the opposing team is heading. Now, on Himmelsdorf, 
Again, hill is a prominent place where everyone likes to go because if you win the hill, you have high ground and it seems like if you have a high ground, you should be able to win the game, right? Not always, not always. So if the opposing team pushes the hill area, just like your team does, then it might be an even battle and then it will depend on the skill, whoever wins this area. However, if you neglect the banana roll on Himmelsdorf, it's gonna end bad. Now, this game ended up good for us because of two reasons. One, distraction mode. In distraction mode, actually, if the team goes together, in many cases it works because there's no bases, there's nothing to cap, and yeah, your team sticks together, you plow through the opposition, you know, and, and you win the game. So in this case, it seemed like this was gonna happen, but what did I do? I did not follow the path. I decided to stick around, around the corner, in B9, and I was able to defend by myself, almost by myself, in which case, worked. But in the second game, it's not gonna work, and you'll see what I'm talking about there. Now, the only reason this worked for me in this game, and I was aggressive enough in this game, because the opposition split the forces. They did not push me all together at once. If they would have pushed me all together by once, I would have been dead. And this game wouldn't have finished the way it will finish. And that's the second reason. So, in the destruction mode, it's probably not necessary that your forces split on Himmelsdorf. You can all go to hill and probably still manage to win the game. In a flag based mode, it's more, most likely that if you neglect the banana road, you will lose the game. Now, in both cases, both games, I'm going to be very aggressive and I'm going to try to defend the same corner and you'll see what happens in the second game. In the first game, I was able to defend it only because the opposition did not pay attention to me. Now, I managed to put up a really nice game. Ace tanker, 3.4, almost 3.5k damage. 617 assisted damage, 1000 blocked. Nice game, and I get second mark on Zippy Mandel's account. Not bad at all, right? But again, the reason why this game was so good for me is because I decided to stick around, be aggressive, defend that corner, and try to get as much damage as I can. But because opposition didn't push me, I was able to get the result that I did with minimum support. Okay, let's skip to the second game of the evening. And in this game, we're gonna be in the same spawn location. Also in a distraction mode, but I will play this game in similar fashion as it would be a flag based mode. Now, the reason why I played this game like that was because I wanted to make this video. And I already had the T29 video so I wanted to follow this up with, with this kind of game and see what happens. And I played a few games on Himmelsdorf, not that many. Uh, this served as an opportunity to do this. So we're gonna pretty much do exactly the same thing. We're gonna head for the hill first and we're gonna watch the map at the same time to see what happens. As you can see here, our team is nicely spread at this point in time. Now, maybe for distraction mode, it may not be the best way to do it. Probably it would be better if your team sticks together on a city map. But in our case, we spread a lot. Now, where the mistake comes is that my team that heads for the hill completely disregarded what happens in the middle. Now, there is a heavy tank there already calling for help. And these guys that are heading up the hill did not pay attention or they disregarded the fact that this is happening down here. Now, I came down here to defend. I noticed there are a few of these enemy tanks heading this way, some heavy armor here, but I thought maybe if I get a little bit of support, we'll be able to hold these guys. It will not be the case. Why? Because there is just too much armor here, too much armor. And just like in the first game, I loaded APCR rounds right away or premium rounds right away because I need to penetrate my shots. 
If I am to survive in this situation, I need to penetrate my shots. Now, I do have one tank destroyer with me, but he decided to fall, fall back. Uh, the tank in a banana road is going to die. Now, look at the medium tank on top of the hill. He responds to my SOS calls right now, but it's going to be way too late. And he will be the only one that responds to my calls. And as you notice here, the entire team, the entire opposition team is actually gonna head towards me and they're gonna try to take me out of the game. And if there's something like this, there's absolutely nothing. And I mean absolutely nothing that you can do. Now, again, keep in mind that I played this game because I wanted to end up in exactly the same situation and I wanted to see if I'll be able to pull this off. There was way too much armor here for me. I didn't get enough support and basically I got destroyed in no time. So disregard the damage numbers because that's not what I wanted to show you in this game. It's nothing really special. What I do want to show you though is a valiant effort by the friendly platoon in this game and the two guys. One was in Wheezy tier 9 heavy tank and the other guy was in type 61. Now they're gonna end up to have stellar, absolutely stellar games here and maybe with a little bit of luck they would have been able to pull this off. However, if they did come down earlier and help me hold the corner, we probably would have been able to win this game but instead, it turned out to be FUBAR. First of all, we would be able to stop these guys coming up the hill. Second, we would have enough firepower to probably um, get them while they were turning and trying to shoot at me. So these guys would be basically getting freebies if that would happen. Now, where they are now, they're still in a pretty good position to defend. And they're gonna do spectacular job and honestly the arty our arty in this game also played a key vital role i mean you just saw him on the left side here shooting down from the hill i mean usually i don't get those arty players on my team in this situation this arty player did really well but it's not going to be enough and and that's what i want to point out to you guys usually on himmel's door Banana Road, very, very, very important area of the map because it's like a dagger. If you don't defend this area and the opposition actually manages to push through there, it's awfully difficult to defend and win the game because there's so much protection there that you can actually cause chaos. And again, in a flag based mode, this would have been a loss because these guys would have been already capping and the only reason we're not losing this game yet and we're not capped out is because the opposing team has to pretty much kill everybody else, right? So these guys are able to defend this position here. Now, this is a key part or moment of the game. These guys are holding this hill quite nicely here so far. And they've been putting up some nice damage numbers. The RD is supporting quite nicely as well. But at some point, one of the enemy tanks, I think it's going to happen right now. Yeah, that's right. The Conqueror decided to push up. And because he's making this gutsy play here, and he's drawing all the attention to himself, the, um, the remaining players on the opposing team are getting gutsy. They're poking out more, poking out more, and they're actually able to move up slightly so i think the conqueror is making the right play here he wants to get up here he wants to take out one of the platoon mates and he does he takes out the type 61 which is the right play he takes out the guy with a lower health number and now he's gonna try to engage this wheezy now i think he did the right thing by trying to pull his teammates behind him and him being top tier so the right play here is to face hack, but look at this Arty shot here. <laughs> it's freaking... Arty's playing amazing game. All of a sudden the game seems quite winnable right now. Now, that T28 is in no man's land. And at this point in time, 
where they are right now, where the Wheezy is and where the uh, artillery is, they're both in a really good positions. Now, if the Wheezy held this spot a little bit longer and tried to draw these guys up on top of the hill, Artie has shots from the side. From the left side, Artie has shots and this guy has uh, can draw cover from the dead conqueror and uh, you know, I'm sure they'll be able to win the game, but all of a sudden, Weezy decided to make a play. He decided to push these two guys. Now, he's a two shot, definitely two shot to both of these guys. Actually, he probably was a one shot to the T28 earlier. Now, he's gonna play this really well, but what he's doing at this point in time, he's basically taking his teammate which is what the artillery team made out of the game because artillery can't do anything at this point in time it's only his battle I think he was suspecting that uh, the heavy tank that wasn't spotted yet he would come around from behind and eventually would engage him but I'm sure if they dropped behind the castle they would have been able to hold this a little bit longer Again, it's debatable whether his play was correct or not. He bounced that shot on T28 and that hurt him, unfortunately. If he hit that shot, maybe the things would have turned out a lot differently, but they did not. So the RD is in a hide mode right now. He's going to try to put his last shadow damage out. Whoever comes around that corner, there it is. He puts a shot into the KV4, but the game is going to be lost. And the reason why? is because our team basically neglected the banana road. If we set up defensive perimeter earlier around the corner where I was defending, I think this game would have turned out a lot differently and we would have been able to win the game. But regardless, don't matter where I finished, take a look at these two guys, Type 61 and Wheezy 111. They finished 1-2. The Type 61 had 4k damage, the Wheezy had 4.6k damage, fantastic games, still got their damage numbers, but unfortunately they couldn't pull this off at the end of the day. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, that's it for today, until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, check it out.